Hello friends, this video on P block elements part 29 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let's talk about the reaction with oxygen for the group 16 element. See these group 16 elements, they form halides and the halides are of these form S2X2 or SX2 or SX4 or SX6. This is my hexahalides. This is my tetrahalides. This is my dihalides. So like that we have different kinds of halides. And this X can be any of the halogen group. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iron. You talk about the stability. My F- minus is more stable than Cl- minus, than Br- minus, and then I-. Minus. This is something we have seen. Nothing new in this. And let's talk about uh, the hexa halides now. Right. Talk about the hexa halides. These hexa halides, we have uh, hexa, this halogen can be fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, right? any of the halides. So let's understand the hexa fluorides first. Hexa fluorides little special case all the hexafluorides are gas all except for it there's the exception and the exception is that sf6 is the only hexafluoride that is not gas sorry all the hexafluorides are gas that is correct and they are unstable also SF6 is the only one that is gas, but that is stable. Please note, all the hexafluorides, they are actually gas and unstable. My selenium, tellurium, my uh, oxygen will not form hexafluorides. Sulfur will form SF6. Selenium will form SEF6. Tellurium will form TEF6. All these are gas and all these are unstable. These are unstable, but this is stable, SF6. And why this is stable? This is stable because of the steric reasons. If you see the structure of SF6, this is the structure. This is like a plane. Right? So because of the steric reasons, it is stable, but others are not stable. Okay. And let's talk about uh, my other halides, SX4 fine. So there, there you can have, let's take fluorine, we'll take fluorine uh, halogen. So for SX4, you can have my SF4. You can have SEF4 and then you can have TEF4. So if we talk about SF4, this is my gas, SEF4 is a liquid and TEF4 is solid. Other example of uh, SX4 you can take as uh, SCL4 that is also possible. Okay, let's take and you know all these SX4, these are my SP3D hybridized. And because of these uh, SP3 hybridization, they have trigonal bipyramidal shape. Okay, these F S X this S F six is my octahedral. This is octahedral structure. And this is my S P three D two.
So if we talk about my SF4 that is sulfur tetrafluoride, this is prepared by my fluorinating sulfur dichloride with sodium fluoride at almost 50 Kelvin. And this is a colorless gas, colorless. There is no color to this gas. Very, very reactive. My SF4 is very, very reactive. And this is easily hydrolyzed by water to form sulfur dioxide and hydrogen fluoride. So if you take SF4, you hydrolyze with water, you get my sulfur dioxide and hydrogen fluoride. And the sulfur tetrafluoride is used as fluorinating agent. See the structure of SF4. This is the structure. I have S, I have F, I have F. And there's a lone pair of electron here. So we see one, two, three, four, sp3, d. This is sp3, d hybridized. Yeah, sp3, d hybridized. sp1, p2, p3, and d. sp3, d hybridized. Okay. And this bond length is almost 165 picometer. And in this case, SF4, the bond length was 155 picometer. Okay, now let's see SX2. The example of SX2 form can be my. SF2, SCL2, SBR2, like this. S is my sulfur actually. And uh, for S2X2, example can be S2F2, S2Cl2, S2Br2. If it's SX2, example one more is OF2, that is oxygen dichloride. Okay, so if you talk about this uh, SX2 form, all the elements except selenium, they form dichloride and dibromide. If you talk about the dichloride, my, except, yeah, sulfur, selenium, tellurium will also have dichloride. And these are all sp3 hybridized. Okay, and these also exist as dimers, and these dimers are nothing but my S two X two form, and these actually the dimers they undergo this proportion reaction. So if you see, for uh, example, Se two Cl two of form S2X2, it will go disproportional reaction to form SeCl2 and Se. That is what it will form. So we have so many halides of this oxygen family. Let's take one numerical now. H2S is less acidic than H2TE. So if you see H2S and H2TE, this says this is less acidic. The question is why? See, this is why it is acidic. If it is, it is acidic, if it can easily give this H plus that means these bonds can break and you can form H plus easily. But if you talk about the bond dissociation, dis association enthalpy, it decreases down the group. So that means it is easy to break TEH bond, easy to break, but OH bond difficult to break. 
this is something which we have seen. So if you compare with uh, SH also, SH bond and TEH bond, SH bond difficult to break, TEH bond easy to break. Since TEH bond is easy to break, this will break easily and form H plus and it will, form, it will be acidic. Correct. Thus, my H2TE is more acidic than H2S or I can say H2S is less acidic than H2T. It's all about my bond dissociation enthalpy and this value decreased down the group or my EH, EH bond this association enthalpy and E is my any of these elements H is my hydrogen. Here we have to write the order of thermal stability of the hydrides of the group 16 elements. See, the thermal stability of the hydride decreases down the group. It decreases down the group. So let's form the hydrides. For oxygen, the hydride is H2O. For sulfur, the hydride is H2S. For selenium, it is H2SE. For terrenium, it is H2T. For polonium, it is H2. So now we have seen just now that this EH bond enthalpy, E can be any of these elements, and H is hydrogen. This bond dissociation enthalpy decreased down the group. That is, it is easy to break this bond, HPO bond, but difficult to break which bond? Difficult to break. Let's take this T. It is easy to break this bond. Easy to break. And this bond is difficult to break. OH bond difficult to break. TH easy to break. So if you go down the group, since it is easy to break the bond, the thermal stability also decrease down the group. So you can say that water is more stable. H2S is again less. H2S is all the more less. H2T is all the more less. And H2PO is unstable. Okay, and the reason why this EH bond dissociation enthalpy is decreasing down the group is because of the size. As we go down the group, the size is increasing, right? The size is increasing, it is easy to break. For example, this bond is one bond, let's suppose this is oxygen, this is hydrogen, and this is another bond. So this, this is, let's suppose, selenium, and this is hydrogen. This is oxygen, this is hydrogen. This is easy to break. Because size of selenium is what, and there's extra stability in water. Why? Because the oxygen is small in size, is electronegative element, and since oxygen is electronegative element, it attracts electron to water itself. It's slightly negative charge. Hydrogen is slightly positive charge, and thus there is a hydrogen bonding with the neighboring water molecule. So because of the hydrogen bonding also, water gets extra stability. Okay. Let's take one simple question. Water is liquid, hydrogen sulfide is gas. Why? Very easy reason actually if you draw the structure of water and draw the structure of hydrogen sulfide. Oxygen is very electronegative, Electro electron is attracted towards oxygen, oxygen gets negative charge, hydrogen gets positive charge. Sulfur is not that much electronegative won't be able to attract electron towards itself. No hydrogen bond. In this case, there's a hydrogen bond. There is another oxygen a water molecule nearby. Slightly negative charge, slightly positive and slightly positive. So these positive and negative charge will form a hydrogen bond. So because of hydrogen bond, because of hydrogen bond, water is liquid. Okay. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.